Hey y'all, this is Pure Love Talk, Season 2, Episode 7. Today we're talking about um, street harassment. But before we talk about that, it's been a minute since we did, we skipped last month doing an episode because I was having some really bad migraines. So for those who don't know, I suffer from chronic migraines and they really kick my butt so I can't do much of anything. So, uh... We couldn't film then. Uh, what else has been going on? Um, I personally have been dealing with a postpartum depression. Mm. So, you know, it's been kind of rough right now. Um, it's almost that time of the month, so I'm not feeling too great. I'm pretty tired <laughs> and a lot of pain. I'm just waiting for the shit show. But, <laughs> you know, working every day to get better. Yeah. And oh, but you you didn't say um, she's um, doing a YouTube channel. She has a YouTube channel where you're doing a look every day for. It's 31 days of battling depression. That's the name of it. So today I just finished filming, as you can see. Um, so I'll post that on my um, page. It's gonna be a combination of just videos of me doing my makeup and um, like slideshow videos of the final look as well as kind of a vlog if I want to like talk about things that I've been dealing with. So I'm trying to find creative, um, not destructive ways to deal with depression and makeup makes mm. me happy. So I figured I'd do that even if people don't watch it, you know, I do, I'm doing it for myself. So I'm so proud of you. Mm -hmm. It's so good to do. It's hard. It's hard. We've both been dealing with some depression. So, you know, moving forward um so i'm glad it's it's funny every time we're gonna do a pure love episode we're like oh my god we have to set up the camera we have to do this with. and then as soon as we turn it on i always feel like after we do it actually i'm always like that was so good i really like that conversation we had you know so i it, it's almost like how the depression is sometimes so it's the momentum that's the yeah. hard part i think we have to do a part two about mental illness we did that before i think a lot of people like that and i think we need to do some more about that um yeah um and walking is gonna be one real soon on halloween yeah so that's exciting and you know thinking about all the the first birthday uh i had a birthday uh i just turned 48 woo, 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 woo. yeah um i'm feeling good uh okay so let's get into street harassment um i you know i i wanted to talk about this uh I, it popped into my head the other day because Every time I think about my um, childhood and um, thinking about being a, a little girl, and I, I'm going to be specific, a little girl, uh, preteen, uh, you know, going through puberty and all that, like street harassment was a significantly huge piece of my life. And it was really intense. It was really intense. And it's interesting. I'm having... Um, I have such different, uh, such a different relationship with street harassment right now because of how I look. Um, so I could talk about that shift, but it was really um, a scary thing. Actually, I think for a long time it was so like you know you get used to the shit. You know it was so like normal, and I don't remember when I realized that that wasn't normal. But it was scary. Um, and the way I had to navigate the streets and how I had to respond to it and all that. So, um, just thinking a lot about that. And I'm wondering about your experiences and how you think about it now. Well, um, you've, I've always been aware of it and knew that it was wrong and weird and inappropriate. Um, but, you know, it's been happening to me since, I don't know, I had to be maybe 11, 12, maybe even younger than that mm -hmm. when I you know, older men started to notice me, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I remember always being uncomfortable. I remember hating um, 
some guys would be more aggressive than others. Some guys, like, they might try to flash themselves or they might try to grope you. Then there's the people who just, like, shout obscenities and right. curse at you and call you out your name and make you feel afraid. Like, oh, God, are they going to, like, attack me or something? Mm -hmm. And then it's always walking through that group of guys when you're trying to get home. Yeah. And you're like, shit, like, I'm by myself. And there's, like, 25 guys right here, like... Yeah. So it's always like, who's are they gonna bother me? Let me just like keep my head down, walk fast, or act like I'm on the phone with somebody. Like there's always like all there's these like little strategies that we done. yeah yeah, and I hate that yeah. we have to do that. Like oh, put your keys in between your knuckles, yeah. act like you're on the phone, cross the street, stay yeah. on the well lit, like all these things just to be able to walk home and make it home alive. Like, yeah, it's like the the whistle, the yell fire. I always remember that because they said don't yell, you know, rape or anything like that because no one would help. It was like, if you yell fire, more people are more likely to look out their windows and look at where the, you know, the screams are coming from, which is really fuck, fucked up, you know, like, they, yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of like all the pieces to what, what, what street harassment looks like, why does it happen? Um, and I don't know, sometimes I wonder if answering the question of why, um, I think people you know, think that that's just the way it is. Like, that's how people talk. And in this, I guess in this instance, it's like cis men, this is how um, cis men pick up girls, you know? And I keep saying like girls because I, you know, it is that thing when I used to say like, you know, these, these older guys were like sniffing around me. They were just sniffing around. It's like they notice when you start to bud. Yeah. And that becomes really scary because it's so confusing too, because it's like, you are developing into this thing that, you know, for some people you've been waiting for. And for me, that was the way I was excited when I started growing nipples and, you know, and just uh, excited and really thinking about the possibility of getting my period and what that was going to look like. Because all the girls are talking about it in this way, like it was like, you know, um, a rite of passage. Exactly. A rites of passage. And I was like, I want that. I want that. And when older men of course are giving you attention you're like wow like i must be really pretty right and it's this thing about getting validation from from men or from other people from other people and 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 believing that i was so beautiful because this is what you know they kept telling me um yeah being cornered you know being like talked to in a certain way being completely disrespected and just thinking about the power dynamics i think um I think it's something that is not thought about. Um, and I'll, I'll give like, uh, what is it? That one instance I remember, I don't know if I told this story before, but I remember uh, many, many years ago, this is when I was very much, much more looking, um, um, when, when I, was I cis identified? Yes, I was cis identified um, then. Uh, and I am coming home from a club at like three or four o'clock in the morning, you know, just, and I didn't feel um, scared at all, you know, because I was in my neighborhood and, um, mostly black and Latinx neighborhood walking. And I did that uh, quite often in New York City. You know, you come home from a club and walk and it's, I forget, three, four in the morning. And there's no one outside, but um, uh, all of a sudden I hear somebody like kind of saying, hey, hey, pss, pss, you know, doing the calling. And I start getting really, really nervous. So I just start walking really fast, you know, really fast. And I hear the footsteps. The guy is like, walking faster behind me he's still calling to me saying hey hey hold up hold up and then i hear him running towards me mm -hmm. so my heart is pumping i am so fucking nervous and i don't know you know sometimes a little bit of those moments there are moments where i have been so afraid i couldn't say anything all i could do was cry and then there were other moments where i felt far and few between where i felt so powerful and i just said something in that moment and what i did was i felt him running after me and I swiftly turned around and this is where I, I remember my training you know from like self-defense when we used to do when you were a kid like this training where they you know they teach you to to, to stand your ground and to yell no from your freaking gut you know it's just like no you know and I turned around I didn't say no but I was just like hey what the you know I, I basically said what the fuck and he was like what and I was like it's four o'clock in the morning. I'm by myself and you're trying to pick me up. And for thank goodness that guy was like, oh, 
in that moment, I realized he didn't realize the power he had. You know what I mean? Like he didn't even realize to, for him, it was like, oh, look at that fine girl. Got to get her. I'm going to, I'm going to, hey, hey, what's up? What's up? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, and just, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. There's nothing wrong. Let me get your number. In his mind, no. That was normal. But then we don't live in a vacuum, right? Like we live in a world where women are raped and sexually assaulted all the time. So what person is going to feel safe, you know? to like say, hey, let me stop in the middle of the street to have a conversation with this person. I have no idea who they are and not have, you know, like not have the other person even think about that, that power that they hold in society and that fear that is real. Like it's not. Fake. It must be nice not to even like think twice about that stuff. Like what a nice existence to not be like, well, oh my God. That's privilege, right? And that's, we all have privilege because like there's white privilege, there's, you know, there's, um, cis privilege there's male privilege there's you know um all uh, types <laughs> and uh, ability privilege you know like people um we are also like i'm sure people with disabilities say that about us constantly right because we don't think about that power actually we don't have we don't have to we don't actually have to so um so i'm constantly thinking about that and i'm thinking about walking you know like because we often think about we only have to talk to little girls about sexual harassment and it's usually about this is how you it's not like harm harm reduction approaches right like don't do this say this don't walk this way do that you know but do we talk to young men do we talk to little boys about that mm. i can honestly say i don't think i've ever heard of anybody in, in my life that's a male that said that they've gotten a conversation about what to do or how to you know maneuver if somebody's trying to like attack you or touch you or anything like that you know it's always girls saying oh my mom always said this or this or this and that but never a boy like oh my mom or my dad told me this because mm -hmm. uh, it's even like, less talked about sorry I, I mean that definitely needs to to change because it, it it always i mean i'm like a broken record but it always goes down to the education and the communication talking about things right because if we did have conversations with you know, are the the children, whether cis boys, girls, trans boys, girls, gender queer, gender non-conforming children, all children, you know, we need to be having the conversation about what is what actually happens in the world, right? Like even have talking about what's happening in the world right now with the Me Too movement, um, all of the documentaries that have come out talking and exposing people who have been harm doers to children and to women, you know, like like everything that's happening, like if you are not talking to your children about some semblance of this, um, there is something wrong uh, because this is um, like truly an epidemic. And, and you know, we're, we're talking about street harassment and I'm saying an epidemic in terms of like sexual assault or child sexual abuse. But um, to me, there's there's definitely a connection, right? It doesn't mean that if you are a... Uh, a street harasser that you will necessarily rape someone but that mentality about like uh, women or trans people's bodies that are so Entitled accessible men, yeah. right it is so accessible and that so it, it goes beyond even talking about street harassment it goes it even goes to talking about like um women and trans people and femmes are um human beings that deserve respect and you know so it it, it goes to talking about like just people like common decency um and i think a lot about like group mentality right like you know when you're young or not, at any age i guess when you have enough people around you doing a thing you know most people kind of join in that thing without even thinking about it right something they would never do by themselves exactly and so you know who knows when you said i'm walking and the 25 guys are there what if one two or three of those guys decided to do or say something you know other people can chime in and that becomes an even scarier thing for them it's like oh i'm just joining in because this is what they expect from me so it's like you know I, i'm thinking about it from all these sides right it's um what is going through the mind of the people that are doing it and what is going i already know what's going through the mind of the people that are receiving it on my end you know you've yes. talked about it um but what is, yeah, going through the mind, is it, this is how I was taught to pick or, people up? 
Or is it just like, oh, you know, I'm just, you know, having a little fun. I'm just messing with her type stuff. Like, right. I mean, I'm serious about, you know, getting in contact, but I'm just trying to, I guess, puff up my feathers. I feel like, mm. I don't know, like to put on a show. Right. I guess they think that that's attractive. Right. And then at the times where, of course, where the, you know, you turn them down and, and you have to have an art to turning them down because then they can get very upset. I was really good at doing the jokey thing. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I have I have a boyfriend, but that's always my la, 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 you know, it's just giggle, giggle. If I didn't, oh, you know, and then it, it, their ego is so good and it's fine. But, um, you know. At other times, it's just like you become a bitch automatically, and you're um, ugly anyway, and you're right. this, yeah. But I also think that has to do with ego, a bruised ego, right? It's like I'm gonna say this, but again, they don't see how their actions um, really harm and act and 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 contribute to a culture um, that does that on a daily basis. I mean, it's really scary to think of little girls you know just walking to school or to the corner store and stuff and, and not being safe yeah and just having just thinking about some person trying to pick them up and so like how do we prepare our children and our young people our preteens our you know our pre prepubescent or going through puberty all of that how do we how do we talk to them about this how do we create that like that protection plan we talked about before like yeah, like, how do we prepare them? And how do we prepare our um, young men or boys or masculine people that um, they cannot do that? That, you know, like, that they, they are a part of this as well as a part of the solution, you know? Um, I know that it got to the point for me, like, where I would really think about even what I would wear outside because mm -hmm. I'm just like I don't even want to cause any attention but it really made no difference because you can go out in oh, sweatpants yeah, like I have dried snot and people will still say something like I haven't brushed my teeth and you're still like ooh girl so <laughs> um but I just I hate that you have to go your first thought is like how do I shrink myself enough so I can disappear or I can be invisible mm -hmm. So I won't wear this type of outfit. I'll just keep my head down. I'll walk quickly. I'll do this, like, just to shrink yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, and I hate that. That's the mentality. And I know, like, I feel like a big part of talking about sexual harassment with children is about, um, one, just viewing everyone as an equal person. Um, then talking about consent as well. Because, you know, most of the times cat calling is because they're trying to, like, ask you out or get your attention. And then it turns violent when they don't accept no for an answer. Mm -hmm. So teaching your kids about no and consent and how, you know, you can't, and how, just approaching people in different manners instead of aggressive and loud and like taunting and, you know, like just, I think that that was, that would be a big part of it because it's just like, you can, you know, say hello to somebody. Oh, I think you're attractive. How are you? And then if they're like, oh no, thank you. Then it's like, all right, well have a nice day or something. You know, it would be a different situation if it was done respectfully, I feel. Um, if people didn't view the people that they're catcalling as objects or less than, I feel like it would be a different situation, too. It's funny you said catcalling, and I'm like, I, why, do, why do we call it catcalling? I don't even know. Because the femmes and women are seen as, like, cats or, or something, um, you know, like... So I'm like, but I know people have used that in, in an empowering way as well. But um, but you were saying we make ourselves smaller and stuff. But like then if you make yourself bigger, right? Like if you're like, fuck this, I am a fierce ass femme and I'm dressing the way I want to dress and be who I want to be. And I am going to express my sexuality and not feel like, you know, I have to hide this. Then what happens? You're easy, you're fast, you're this, you're that. Right. And you, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. All right, so that has to change, right? Because if we're trying to talk about sexuality in this very, like, celebratory, beautiful way, we do, you know, we, we do have to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it, because there's a history here. We can't leave our history out of, like, um, all of it, like, patriarchy, sexism, all of these things. Um, but we need to be really like addressing these things and interrupting them like really that's that's a great way to like have a conversation about that or any movie you put on ever 
has some probably harassment or some person trying to pick somebody up that is really, really intense and really uncomfortable, that's a great conversation um, starter. And it's also become very like, um, what do you call it? Um, Just uh, normalized in um, Hollywood about like the harassment and, and, and um, stalking even, yeah. right? Um, so it's like interrupting it. And I remember, um, I don't know if you remember this when you were like four or something, when we were on the bus and um this drunk guy came in and he was harassing this woman um who was on the bus and, and when i say harassing him he was harassing her and he was starting to like touch her and she was clearly uncomfortable and afraid and um i was so upset because i kept looking around the bus and i'm looking at the men on the bus and everybody even the bus driver and no one was paying attention so wow. i got up i screamed i demanded that the bus driver um throw the guy out and I think the bus driver was scared of the guy and wouldn't throw him out and I went head to head with this guy we were arguing and um I cursed him out and um I demanded that he got out and so finally he got out and then it was our stop and we got off and you I remember you grabbing my hand and you looking up at me and you say I'm proud of you mommy <laughs> and I was like it and it, 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 and it was just like, yes, she saw me do this, like that, that that was wrong, that I showed her that what we just saw was a wrong uh, and bad thing that we don't, um, we don't accept that. And so, and we talked a little more about it. So that was a great opportunity because it happens. Because mm -hmm. I am um, thinking about that, like starting the conversation young, a lot of people started going off in that direction with the ogling and, you know, objectifying because like there was this post on Facebook I saw and you know people had mixed um, responses to it but for me I thought it was completely inappropriate and I didn't like it at all mm -hmm. um, this guy brought his underage kids like you know 10 7 8 around that he took them to Hooters and then he takes a picture of them and they're all like looking at these girls and everyone's like ah ha, 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 lol and I'm just like, that's not funny. Like, and the, his caption was like, oh, yeah, I'm teaching them something, 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 like about what kind of girls to look at or, you know, I'm starting them early or something. And I was just like, this is so disgusting. Um, like, why are you bringing them to a place that's clearly just like hypersexualized? Like, why are you even encouraging that behavior? Let kids be kids. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to worry about, ooh, like, I have to look at girls with the big breasts and big asses. Right, like, right. Let me, oh, look at these shorts. Look at her butt hanging out. Like when fathers, I see that, and even mothers too, encourage their kids to be hypersexual with older people, it bothers me so much. Mm. Like it's just inappropriate. And then it's like, I don't want it, like it's, I don't want to invite that behavior in the opposite direction. Right, right. Because if they think, oh well, you know, she doesn't mind, she's been doing. It. No, I don't want any type of inappropriate behavior between you know Joaquin and anybody, even like his age, older, younger, you know. But I wouldn't, you know do that like i see people do so many inappropriate things with their kids and i'm like i would never do that mm. you know i'm thinking about like um uh one of the things that um i liked to do with you um is do like role plays like really role play like i think a lot of times um we um we might hopefully we do talk to our kids about some harassment stuff but do we even talk about how we can respond? Because that's a scary thing. I know that it was for me, like how to respond, how to read a situation so that I can respond appropriately. And it is a harm reduction approach, but we need to have that skill because unfortunately that's happening. So are we having that conversation, assessing a situation? Well, who do we talk to? Um, where are we when this is happening? Um, and then, you know, for the, for the um, young boys, like what are they doing? Um, how do they get out of being a part of the group mentality when something bad is happening you know like you've seen many of movies where a group of kids are doing something like come on come on just come with us and you knew that you shouldn't you know you shouldn't go and but it's in those moments like it's how do they acceptance. respond like how to so it's like why not role play these things like how to come up with those um one-liners uh quick responses things to get you out of situations who to talk to who to turn to um yeah and that um uh, that uh that you will believe them that you will talk to them that you will see them because i knew that i couldn't talk to anybody about it, it just felt really messed up it felt really messed up and i i remember one time and i've said this story before um i uh I don't even know. I was like 14 or something like that, coming up from the train station. And there was a homeless man 
laying on the ground um, right in front and um, and in New York and a lot of places where people don't see homeless people, they um, they um, sit in places where you you have to see them. And I've seen that tactic before, and I am all for it. And I see you know, and so um, I see him there. And as I'm passing him, he says the most vulgar things to me, what he wants to do to me sexually, like really loud and vulgar. And I was just like, wow, like. First of all, I have never looked at a homeless person and seen myself better than them. Never. I've been homeless. We've been homeless ourselves. And so, um, but looking at this man, that this man is actually laying on the ground. He felt that he had, he felt so much more empowered than me because I was a girl or because I had a vagina or whatever it was that he could talk so vulgar to me like that in front of, you know, people that it was Should've so acceptable. Kicked him right in the chest. <laughs> You know, you ignore and you walk, but it's like that was just such a shocking thing to me, you know, at that time. Of course. Mm. Yeah. And it's the the sad thing is that when like you ask women or non men, femmes, what age did people start looking at you inappropriately? The ages are so young. It's like, oh I was eight, I was nine. I'm like, what? Like in second grade, third grade, like it's like I'm just like you're kids and I, in my head like it does not like I just don't get it because mm -hmm. I'm like you're a kid I don't get how and people happens. have this mindset yeah I know but um yes that that's the I, I think it starts just that early I mean I, I see it happening I see the way people look and 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 the thing that makes me so sad the thing that makes me really really sad is like with my taking testosterone and stuff and I remember right now I've shaved my the little bit of hair I had up here and on my chin and it's made such a huge difference right because um, I remember thinking that I miss talking to children um, because uh, depending on how people see me you know when I see a kid as a woman looking at a child I'm like oh my god they're so cute and just talk 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 and how old are they and you can get into a conversation and everything but um now you know or in the past you know it was just like uh why are you talking to me like there's there's a way in which i'm, I'm viewed now right but the harassment has not ended it's just in a different kind of way it's very interesting because i'm fluid and i kind of flow and wear dresses and maybe sometimes wear makeup and this and that and blah 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 um people see me different all the time right so um sometimes i'm uh you know they see me straight up you're a woman like, or maybe a dyke, right? Like a woman who's a dyke. And then uh, other times I, they think I am a gay man, a gay feminine, fam, gay femme man. Um, and uh, they also think that I am a trans woman. Um, and so depending on how I'm viewed, that's where the harassment kind of lies, whether it is, it, it's like teetering. It's like, is it going to be sexual harassment or is it going to be physical harassment? You know, it's just like, what is it? What is it going to be? Or is it going to be both, you know? Um, and it's just, um, and I think in those instances, I don't know if it has to do with people wanting to pick you up. So I, I think I think it has to do with the fear of difference. Um, for some people, it's about um, desire that they can never express. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a, a lot of, I guess, a lot of underlying reasons. There's not any one thing, but um, it, it definitely has to be a conversation to talk because when your kids go out into the world, when they go to school, when they go to the corner store and all that stuff, it's like they're always walking somewhere where you're not and those things happen. And they are so scary. It happens even like the people behind the register at the corner store. Mm -hmm. Like I remember going to the corner store and these guys being like so disgusting. So mm -hmm. it's everywhere. It could be your teacher, strangers on the street, anybody. So I'm just like, I think uh, an important lesson is just at the base of everything is to see others, everyone as a human being with feelings and thoughts and stuff and to treat them mm -hmm. the way you want to be treated. You know, if you see them as a person and not as an object, you know, it might change how people approach each other. Mm. Yeah. And also on the other end of that, I think it's a lot of work to, it, it's the, the work of um, 
trying to build self-esteem with kids too and agency and power right um because if a kid has uh, a lot more self-esteem i didn't i didn't have a lot of self-esteem um i was scared nobody was talking to me about these things i wasn't being talked to about sexuality in any way shape or form so i was just like what is going on you know one minute i'm a, a little girl and the next minute i'm like a piece of meat mm -hmm. you know um so a lot of things to talk about and also how does this affect siblings if there are boys and girls if there is a, a gender uh, variant child and you know a cis child how does that shift and that's like really important conversations to have because if they're together and they are you know and, and harassment is happening to both or one how do they how to address those issues right so i i would say definitely role play communication um you know tons of movies use movies as like conversation pieces they ask the lots best. of questions yeah but self-esteem self-esteem um i think that's a great builder and um yeah and just talk to your kids talk to your nephews and nieces and grandchildren just talk just talk yeah right. any last magical words um I can't wait for Joaquin's birthday. That's all I can think about. <laughs> and um, I hope that we get to like film a non-conventional episode that day where we just like film the party and everything. So we will do little pieces of it. So mm -hmm. since you guys have seen our family, mm -hmm. let you come to his first birthday party. It's a major birthday. Yes. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. And please, you know, send in questions, uh, like our stuff, um, subscribe. Yes, yes. yes. Share yes. everything. Please. And thanks for your support, everyone. Bye. Right. See you next time.